Hello everyone and welcome to another random bits and pieces segment from my brain and today sit a while for we are playing some more franchise hockey manager 6 as part of the Ottawa Senators. Alright so it's been a little bit here since I've actually played this game and I guess at the end of the last episode I didn't realize that February was going to be a short month. Uh, I guess there were Olympics or something in 2010, uh, so um, it's gonna be a little bit of a shorter video today. Um, it is February, so prior to shooting the video I looked at uh, who all needs an extension and I made some decisions, and one decision was made for me. Uh, so uh, we can see who I am bringing back here. So we're gonna bring back Anzal Stajan, Ilya Zubov, Chris Kelly, Drazinovich, uh, Braden Shen, Mike Hoffman, Jared Cowan, Brian Lee, Marian Osa, Patrick Keyes, Eric Kondra, and Justin Adelkater. Um, of note that I am not going to be bringing back are three defensemen. Uh, Scott Niedermeyer is getting older and he's really not playing all that great, so I will not be bringing him back. Uh, same for Mark Streit, who uh, is kind of having a, another down season, so I don't think it's going to come back for him. And Sheldon Sorry is getting older and not as efficient, so I'm letting those three walk. So there's a possibility that I'm going to need to turn to free agency for uh, some help on D. Uh, my D is going to be a little uh, shaky at that point. Now the decision that's been made for me, I have a player that refuses to negotiate with me, uh, so I've put him on the block, and that is Ryan Cannon. So Ryan Cannon does not want to come back, so I will, I, I've put him on the trade block, and uh, if I don't get an offer for him, the trade deadline is on, I wanna say March 3rd this uh, season, uh, so, uh, at the start of the next video, if I didn't get an offer for him, uh, I will go ahead and shop him and get the best offer for him because I refuse to lose him for nothing. So that's pretty much where we're at. We are way ahead uh, atop of the Eastern Conference standings there with 96 points. Uh, that's 18 more than second place Flyers. Uh, so. Let's go ahead and see what February has in store for us. Uh, granted, it's going to be a little bit of a shorter month, uh, but we still will go through it. Alright. So, a whole bunch of uh, signings here. Oh, so Eugene Melnik is very happy with my work. Uh, we went 11, 2 and 2 in January, so he's pretty happy. Alright, so we have that. Red Love is not far from returning. Oh, one, one other thing is I toyed with the idea of maybe trading Joe Thornton because I acquired Petrus Bergeron, uh, but Jason Spitzer injury to pretty much uh, until the end of the season kind of changed my plans for that, so I'll hold on to Jumbo Joe for now. Uh, maybe I'll reevaluate later, uh, but right now I kind of need him for my offense. Uh, oh, I'm not the only one who uh, signed some extensions there. Uh, Devon Dubnik uh, signed an extension with the Oilers. So it's a three year at 4.28 million per year. So Devon Dubnik getting good uh, a lot faster than he did in real life. Uh, Dubnik didn't get it is tried until he was in his late 20s in real life. Uh, now he's hitting it at 23 years old. He's already a four star uh, goaltender there. Alright, so Jared Cowan signed. Marianosa signed. Chris Kelly signed. Patrick Eve signed. So that should only leave the people that I did not want to bring back. So it's got me to minus right. Sorry, Martin Avlat, I'm not bringing back. Cody Bass, Bobby Butler, Kalan, I can't sign. So quite a few people that I'm not bringing back, actually. Um, OK. 
Okay, I noticed something real quick, so... Okay, alright, I, I wasn't sure, so I still have the logo. So, uh, prior to shooting the video, I got the bug with the half people, not even half, just like their right arm uh, in the picture, like we've seen uh, pop up a few times, and I actually cut it before I started to record, so I fixed it, but... Uh, uh, when I saw the generic uniforms, I was afraid that it deleted the or overwrote the the logos, but it didn't. So, all right. So let's continue here. A strong game for Sergei Mozyakin with Columbus. He had a hat trick against Colorado. Pretty good game. All right, Radulov is. Completely healed back and Corey Crawford also signed an extension with Chicago at 4.83 million per season for two years in Chicago. Four-star goaltender there as well. Alright, so let's take a quick look here. Here. Fix that. There we go. Right, so we are going to play our first game of February in Buffalo. So Buffalo have a disastrous season where they are 14, 37 and 3. This is terrible. Uh, they are dead last in the East with that record and we are 3 and 0 against them this season. So not going very well in Buffalo. So we're going to go to Brian Elliott. They are going to Rob Zepp. And we won 42. All right, so we outshot the Sabers 55 to 29. Joe Thornton, whom I decided to not trade, tanked me with being the first star of the game with a goal and an assist. Michael Russell was the second star with an assist, and Drew Doughty was the third star with an assist as well. Uh, so Buffalo scored first, and then Pavel Datsuk tied game uh, on the power play from Drew Doughty and Matt Stajan, and it was tied at one after one. And we scored twice in the second period. Brooks Like scored from Joe Thornton and Chris Kelly. And then Joe Thornton scored from Brooks Like. And it was 3 to 1 cents after two. And then we took a 4 1 lead uh, at the start of the third period with Marianosa scoring uh, unassisted. Made it 4 1 cents. And then with two seconds left to go in the game, Buffalo scored. Made it 4 2. Obviously, it was too little too late. And 4 2 is a sense victory today. And Travis Moen is suspended uh, for something that he did in this game. He's going to miss eight games. Take that, Travis Moen. You played for Montreal. I don't like you. Alright. I mean, in real life, he did. I mean, I don't really have any animosity. Actually, I probably would uh, have a little bit more animosity from Travis Moen from playing for the Ducks in the finals against us. His line with uh, Rob Niedermeyer and Sammy Paulson was very good at countering our big line and was a very huge factor in shutting us down in five games so yeah so if there was animosity which there's really not any animosity but that's probably where it would be coming from all right so Thomas Sarovi is uh, available on waivers not gonna pick him up and we are now going to face another team that is terrible this season, the Vancouver Canucks. Now we are playing at home, hosting the Canucks. They are 12, 38, and 5. That is a terrible record. That's even worse than the Buffalo record. So we have not played Vancouver so far this season. So let's take a quick look at their lineup here. Do they have a lot of injuries or something? Oh, they do. Well... I mean, obviously that won't that wouldn't help when your top two players are hurt at the same time. So the sitting twins are both on injured reserve, so we're not going to be facing them. And uh, Yannick Hansen is also on injured reserve, so I'm not going to face them. So actually on the lineup, uh, we have Corey Schneider and Marty Turco. And the goaltending is, I mean, it's not great, but it's not terrible. 
Alexander Edler, uh, Oberg, Sopel, Matthias Olund, Anders Eriksson, Joe Corvo, Yaroslav Spacek, and David Petrasek on D. Again, it's not great, but it's not completely terrible on D. Uh, Bates Battaglia, Fraser McLaren, Thomas Holmstrom, Shurikov Olden, Cody Hodgson, Jeffrey Tenut, Burish Grabner, Ivan N. Umberger, and Ormai. That, that offense is terrible without especially without the Sedin twin even with the Sedin twins that offense would not be very good all right so we are going to be hosting the Canucks all right so Corey Schneider is going to be in net for Vancouver we are going to Ansi Niemi who won his first three starts as a Sens goaltender and we won six to three another win for the Sens so we outshot Vancouver 38 to 20 Petrus Bergeron was the first star of the game he had two goals and two assists Pavel Datsuk was the second star with three assists and Patrick Keyes was the third star with two goals and an assist we had 16,553 people to attend this all-Canadian affair. So Vancouver opened up the scoring in the first, but then Patrice Bergeron scored from Pavel Datsyuk, and then he scored again. That was a stunt from Mark Streit and Pavel Datsyuk, and it was 2-1 at that point. Uh, however, Vancouver tied the game 15 seconds later, made it 2-2, but shortly after Patrick Keefe scored as well from Patrice Bergeron and Mark Streit, made it 3-2 Sens after 1. Ooh, Zeleno Oshar might get suspended there, he got an illegal check to the head and then he got a game misconduct, so we're gonna need to see what happens with that. Uh, then a, in the second period, Matt Stajan scored on the power play from Pavel Datsuk and Patrick Eves, made it 4-2. And then Vancouver scored, made it 4-3 after 2, which means that we scored two unanswered goals in the third period. Uh, first was Drew Doughty scoring his fifth from Petrus Bergeron, and then Patrick Eves from uh, Mark Stride and Brooks like 6-3 is the final score. Now let's see if the message we have there is because the Deno Shark got suspended. Yes he did for seven games. Oh that's gonna hurt. So Zedeno Shar is slowing down, only a three-star defense. I mean that's still pretty decent, but uh yeah. Alright, so we lost Shara for seven games so Scott Niedermeyer is going to be drawing in I suppose so the veterans gonna be playing he's been benched quite a bit so. all right so in two days we're gonna be playing in Toronto against the Leafs um, all right so Danny Eatley extends his goal straight to five games with a goal against the Columbus Blue Jackets Memorable game for Duncan Keith in Chicago. He had a hat trick against the Phoenix Coyotes. Yeah, pretty good. All right, so we are playing in Toronto against the Leafs. Uh, the Leafs are doing pretty okay. They are 33, 20, and 5. That's good for 7th in the East. We are 2 and 1 against the Leafs this season. All right, so let's see how we fare without Zdeno Shara in, in the lineup and Jason Spezza too. All right, so Brian Elliott's gonna be back in net for us. He's gonna face Jean Sebastien Giguer, and we won two nothing. Ha! Ah, no problem there. So we outshot Toronto 40 to 28. Brian Elliott was the first of the game with 28 saves, the shutout, and the W. Jean-Sébastien Giguere, despite the loss, got the second star with 38 saves, and Luke Shen got the third star without any points. So Chris Kelly uh, opened up the scoring in the first. Uh, it, it was a power play goal from Joe Thornton and Petrus Bergeron, and it was 1-0 Sens after 1. 
And then all the way into the third period, Mark Strait scored from Scott Niedermeyer and Ryan Callan, made it 2 0 Sens at that point, and that score will remain, and that's how we won. No further action needed for Colorado's Cal Kamiski, not suspended. Miroslav Shatan has recorded 300 goals in his career with a goal against the Colorado Avalanche in that same game. Alright, so... 35 years old, Miroslav Shatan, uh, still a 2.5 star player. Memorable game for Yuri Hudler, who had three goals and an assist against the Kings. Pretty good game. Matt Cullen, oh, former Ottawa Senator Matt Cullen playing for the Wild. Uh, also had a good game with a hat trick of his own against the Flyers. Alright, and now we're playing in a couple days against the Flames at home. Alrighty, one more. Alright, another scouting report. Alright, so Calgary is in town. So Calgary is not doing too hot. They are 25, 26, and 8. We have not played the Flames so far this season. So again, let's take a look at their lineup. No injuries in Calgary, so it's uh, their misfortunes cannot be explained that way. Uh, so it's Andy and Netzel, uh, Craig Anderson, and UC Markinen. Uh, I guess they. I guess he moved away from Levante Super. Uh, Mark Pazmik, Mark Giordano, uh, Ryan Wilson, Tony Ludman, Al Gill, Nicholas Cronwell, Dion Phaneuf, Mike Van Ryan, and so that is pretty decent. So goaltending is decent, the D is decent, but the forwards don't look too good. So Buma, uh, Boy, Nystrom, Janssen, Sutter, Bejain, Novotny, Betts, Robitai, Cracknell, Cabasut, Thornton, and Vazicek. Yikes, yeah. Those forwards are really nothing to write home about. But the D and the gold ending is pretty decent. So I'm guessing that when Andy steals a game or the D plays really well, they have a shot even though they probably don't score many goals. Alright, so UC Markkanen is going to be in net for the Flames. We are going to play Brian Elliott. And we won 42. Alright, we outshot the Flames 51 to 16. Alex Pietrangelo was the first star of the game. He had an assist. Steve Bejain was the second star of the game with two assists. And Joel Thornton was the third star with an assist. 15,560 people in attendance for this game. So Calgary scored first, and it was 1-0. And then Ryan Callan scored from Mike Fisher, tied the game at 1, and it was tied at 1 after 1. Then in the second period, Brooks Lyke scored his 20th goal from Patrick Eves and Joel Thornton, made it 2-1 Ottawa, but then Calgary tied the game, and it was tied at 2 after 2. Which means that we scored twice in the third period. Martin Avlet scored his fifth short-handed from Scott Niedermeyer and Alex Petrangelo, and Petrus Bergeron from Marianosa. 4-2 is the final score. Matt Molson has a memorable game. He had three goals and two assists against the Carolina Hurricanes. Pretty good game for Matt Molson. Five points. Uh, Ruslan Soleil is back from suspension in Dallas, back in the lineup. And speaking of suspension, Brendan Shannon, 41 year old Brendan Shannon, got suspended in St. Louis and he's going to miss 12 games. Wow, that's a long time. With, uh, <laughs> with the stop agent, please, he's going to be out for more than a month. Uh, 
So Kevin Klein in Nashville is also suspended. He's going to miss one game. A memorable game for Sidney Crosby, who had a goal and four assists against the Islanders. Good game for Sid the Kid. Uh, Alright, and then there's been a trade between Washington and Nashville. So Matt Hendricks. moves to Washington and Nathan Page moves to Nashville. Yeah, I, not that it's a big trade, but I do think that the Capitals won this trade, even, even if ever slightly. But that's definitely not a, a game-changing trade there. They just traded depth around. All right, so speaking of Washington, they are in town to face us. Uh, they have a pretty decent record. They are 34, 22, and 4. Uh, that's good for 7th in the East. We are 1-1 one one against Washington this season. So they're going to Tuka Rask in net. We are going to Brian Elliott. And we won 8-2. All right, big win. So we outshot Washington 46 to 18. Ryan Callan was the first star of the game. He had two goals and an assist. Uh, Petrus Bergeron was the second star with two goals and an assist as well. And Chris Kelly was the third star with two assists. 17,228 people in attendance for this game. All right, so we took a 3-0 lead into the first period. We have Mariano Osa scoring from Patrice Bergeron, then Ryan Kahn scored his 10th from Drew Doughty, and then Brooks like from Joe Thornton and Chris Kelly. 3-0 after one. Then Patrice Bergeron scored from Mariano Osa and Scott Niedermeyer, and then scored, Scott Niedermeyer scored, scored short-ended from Ryan Kahn and Eric Kondra. Ryan Kahn scored from Mike Fisher and Chris Kelly into a 6-0 Suns at that point. Then Washington scored a goal, made it 6 1, but we scored again. It was Alex Pietrangelo's fifth from Alexander Radulov and Eric Kondra, 7 1 after two. And then in the third period, Washington scored early, but then Patrice Bergeron scored from Pavel Detsuk and Andre Mizaros, and 8 2 was the end of this shellacking. Mike Weaver is available on waivers, and so is so is Nicholas Grossman. All right, so we have a trade proposal from the Columbus Blue Jackets. So, what are they offering me? They are offering me Adam Pino for Eric Condor. I'm gonna say no to that. Kevin Klein is back from suspension in Nashville. And then Boomister signed an extension with the Panthers. So, seven years extension for a total of 40,670,000. So that's pretty good. So, seven years more for Boomister in Florida. Are they gonna trade him? Are they gonna keep him? I don't know. Sorry about that, gotta keep hydrated. Alright, so we are going to be playing in Detroit against the Red Wings. Red Wings have pretty much always been a good team since I started that. They had a couple years where it was a little bit more difficult, but you know, have you if if you made it that far and you've watched all of my videos, as you know we had a tendency to face them in the Stanley Cup final quite a bit, so so pretty much uh, as it has always been for Detroit. They are doing pretty good. They are 39, 15, and 6, so that's a pretty good record. Let's take a look at that lineup. All right, so they do have Carl Gunnarsson and Kyle, Kipch Kyle Chipchura injured, so uh, both out long term, too. So on the actual lineup, we have Jimmy Howard and Chris Osgood in net, so that's pretty good. 
Kevin Dorman, Jonathan Erickson, Alec Martinez, Ed Jovanovsky, Nick Lidstrom, Ryan Caldwell, Steve Eminger, and Doug Janik on D. That is pretty alright. Uh, David Booth, Johan Franzen, Corey Summon, Ryan Klo, Valtteri Filkula, Tomas Kopitschke, Darren Elm, uh, Sean Matthias, Daniel Alfredson, getting older, Yuri Udler, Andreas Dackel, and Henrik Zetterberg. So it's a pretty good, well rounded team. Not a lot of weaknesses. Maybe a few demon are not all that great, but other than that, it's a pretty decent team. So Brian Elliott is going to be in net for us, he's going to face Jimmy Howard. And we won 4-1 in Detroit at the Jewelry Arena. Alright, so, oh, shots were tied, 25 apiece. Scott Niedermeyer was the first star of the game, he had a goal and an assist. Mark Streit was the second star with a goal and an assist as well. And Joe Thornton was the third star with two assists. So since he drew back in the lineup, Scott Niedermeyer has been playing pretty decent. Now he's making me almost regret not re-signing him, but he is 36 years old, so... Alright. Alright, so we have Pavel Datsuk open up, uh, opening up the scoring in the first from Scott Niedermeyer and Petrus Bergeron, and then Darren Helm from Henrik Zetterberg and Johan Franzen. Uh, so it was tied at one after one. Then in the second period, uh, Scott Niedermeyer scored from Ryan Callan and Chris Kelly, and then Mark Stride from Chris Kelly and Joel Thornton. Three to one sends after two. And then in the third period, Alexander Radulov scored on the power play from Joe Thornton and Mark Streit, and 4-1 was the final score. So pretty decent game that we played there in, New York, uh, in Detroit. Sorry, New York's the next team we're playing. And John Madden has played in a thousand games in his career. Didn't get a point, and that happened against the Carolina Hurricanes. 36 years old, John Madden, still a three and a half star player. Or so definitely. Uh, got a favorable development from the game in terms of at least raw talent, I guess. Uh, Patrick Kane extends his goal streak to five games. He did score a goal against Atlanta. And Philip Novak in Washington is suspended. He's going to miss two games. Alright, and we have one more game to play here in February. Um, it's gonna be against the Islanders in New York, so let's see if we can have a perfect month, even though it's a uh, half month, really. Uh, so the Islanders not going doing good there. They are 20, 40, and 1. That's good for 13th in the East. We are 2 0 against the Isles this season. We're gonna go to Ansi Niemi for the last game of the month. He's gonna face Rick DiPietro. And we won 6 to 4, so another victory for the Sens. We outshot the Islanders 52 to 24. Joe Thornton was the first star, he had two goals and an assist. Kyle Opozo was the second star with two goals and an assist, and Drew Doughty was the third star with a goal and an assist. <clears throat> so Doughty opened up the scoring in the first. It was a power play goal from Alexander Redlov and Mark Streit. One nothing Sens. At that point, and then Brooks like scored from Mark Streit and Joe Thornton, made it 2 0. And then the Islanders scored, made it 2 1 after 1 for the Sens. Then the Islanders tied the game in the second period, and then Petrus Bergeron scored short handed from Andre Mazaros, and then the Islanders scored again, so that was 3 3 after 2. And then in the third period, we had Joe Thornton score from Marian Osa. Then the Islanders tied the game yet again, but we came back on top with Joe Thornton scoring on the power play from Petrus Bergeron. And then finally, Mike Fisher scored on the power play as well from Marian Osa and Drew Doughty. 6 4 was the final score in that one with the Islanders that tied the game like, what, three times? So they, they fought pretty valiantly, but in the end, we were too good. Patrick Kane extends his goal straight to six games with a goal against Columbus. Alright. 
so now I'm going to sim all the way to March 1st, so there's probably not going to be a whole lot going on until then. I believe there were Olympics or something. Alright, so Nicholas Grossman is available on waiver, so is Jamie Cyphers not picking up either. Eric Baudouin, Nicholas Grossman. So Columbus picked up Grossman and are trying to pass him through waivers as well the same day. Then Zdenek Kutlak is being also passed through waivers. Right, so we were perfect in February. How about that? Ooh, we have, we have a trade proposal from the New Jersey Devils. They are offering me Timofey Shishkinov for Nick Drozanovich. Hmm. I'm gonna hold on to Nick Drozanovich. Uh, he still has a star and a half potential. Maybe he's going to get that. Tapped out? Maybe not, I don't know. But that's better than the half star player that was being offered to me. Alright, so Francis Watier is available. No, thank you. Sheldon Brookbank is available. I'm gonna say no thank you to that as well. Jeff Cowan is available. Not gonna pick him up. Yeah, I'm not gonna find a gem mid season passing through waivers, I don't think. The trade deadline is nearing! Ooh. Yeah, just a bunch really of counting reports, so really not much to talk about. Mickey Dupont is available. Yeah, you paid too much for how good you are, buddy. Alright, and we are now in March, so that's where we're gonna stop. Uh, so we have that development report all right there you go red wings Howard, top goalie of the month penguins center crosby top player so jimmy Howard and Sidney crosby are the players of the month of february in the nhl all right, so let's take a look here. We have 110 points. That is a 24-point lead on the Flyers and the Panthers. Wow, the Panthers are having themselves a season, huh? Oh, sorry. Uh, apparently, I'm going blind or something. The Panthers have 84 points, not 86. Uh, that, so that's pretty good. So they're having themselves a season, so... They, for the longest time, they were the one team that couldn't make the playoffs in my universe. Now look at them. Alright, so let's look in the west, see if we have something interesting to look at. So Chicago's first, Anaheim, Minnesota, Nashville, Columbus, Detroit, St. Louis and Dallas are holding on to the last spot there. Vancouver still 31 points. That's the, still the worst team in the league. Alright, and let's take a quick look at our stats. So it was a short month, so the stats are not going to be ridiculously changed to what they were. 
Uh, we have Joe Thornton, still a point per game, plus he's 77 points in 63 games. Pelo Datsuk is 56 and 59. Chris Kelly is having himself a pretty good season, 50 and 62. And then the best defenseman that we have is Mark Strite with 35 points in 46 games. So, yeah, uh, we win a lot, but uh, we're not uh, necessarily an offensive dynamo save for a few players All right, and let's take a look in the league see if Crosby is still ridiculously ahead of everybody else of course our best player Spezza got hurt so he's not getting any competition from him uh, Patrick Kane is now the best goal scorer with 38 goals Crosby is still the best passer with 62 assists uh, our best is Thornton with 53 so he's 9 behind and Crosby has 98 points. Uh, our best is Thornton with 77. So he's 21 points behind. Yeah, so bearing an injury, I believe that Sidney Crosby should win the scoring race. Alright, so that's pretty much where we're at. Uh, I know it's a little bit of a shorter video today, uh, as was advertised at the start of the video. Um, that only means that March is probably going to be longer. Looks like there's quite a few games in there that I can see. So we're going to go ahead and stop here. I already saved my games. So as usual, I do want to thank you for tuning in. And if you've liked the video, please feel free to like, subscribe, share, comment, all of that good stuff. And until I roll this game again, I'll see you guys next time. Thank you.